Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship um, here in this space as well as wherever you may be worshiping from. Um, I understand that our internet is working well today, so that's two weeks in a row. Yay. (laughs) Um, Hopefully everyone received a communion kit when you came in. Is that true? If you need one, we'll get one to you. Um, We'll kind of walk through that. We have some uh, guests with us. I'll get to introducing them in a moment. But as we do things, hopefully we we give enough instruction. If not, don't be shy in asking someone around you. Um, We posted the communication director position. uh, So that word's starting to get out. So we ask your patience in between. The plan for now is that Sky and I will make sure that we get bulletins and um, uh, email blasts out as, as we can. Hopefully we don't inundate you because we do not plan to do a newsletter or update web, uh, the website until we get a new communications director. So we ask your patience. If uh, you have a longer article, kind of like the stewardship did, we'll get that out. Uh, as they come to us rather than having it in a monthly newsletter. We'll also continue those weekly uh, updates, which will have valuable information in there as well. All Saints Day is coming up uh, the first Sunday in November. The Visual Choir will be creating an ofrenda, if I'm saying that right, right? Um, We did it during COVID a little bit differently, and so we're gonna continue to do it differently as we're still in the midst of that. But if you would like uh, a picture of your loved one uh, displayed in a beautiful shrine, if you will, uh, that will be, uh, those pictures can be sent to the church or uh, to uh, picture, physical pictures can be dropped off. We'll get those scanned um, and to the visual choir and they'll get that set up. Um, You can also email that, I think I said that, uh, JPEG uh, to the office. Speaking of a very special saint in our midst um, is Millie, who is in rehab. Uh, No visitors yet, uh, but cards are welcome. Uh, You can mail those to the house, and and Terry will be able to pick those up and get those to her. So uh, your prayers and support uh, as much as possible uh, as we hold that saint and as well as Betty Hutchinson, who I think is doing okay too in, in rehab. And so the hard thing with the Delta variant, there's, there's no visitors yet for some. So it's hard to navigate that. But as much as you can hold them in your prayers and uh, send cards and notes of greeting make um, all the difference for them. Um, today, we say goodbye and Godspeed to Jenny who has been with us for 13 years, helping us to make beautiful music amongst all of us, right? We all sing uh, joyfully. Jenny, thank you for your ministry with us. And we welcome Katrina, if you could maybe just wave your hand, who's kind of filling in her own shoes, right? We're not going to say filling in Jenny's shoes. You have your own voice, and so we're happy to... um, have you continue to to make beautiful music with us. Um, Be sure to greet them both. There will be cake um, uh, to celebrate the the closing of of Jenny's time with us here. But who knows? There's all kinds of maybe guest appearances that might happen. I don't know. And a welcoming Katrina. And we also have um, a ministry partner partners with us from uh, Luther House. So I want to introduce you. Come on and make your way up if you're comfortable. I want to introduce you uh, to um, Rhonda Nubi Torres, who is the new interim, correct, uh, director. Uh, We all know and love Bree, who has taken a new call back east. And so Rhonda is stepping into those shoes, and she has some lovely uh, students with her. And so just shout out one at a time, starting with, uh, with uh, Rowan. Yeah, so shout it out nice and loud. So Rowan, Carla, Carla, and James, right? Yeah, we welcome you. Uh, yay. <laughs> 
Um, after the, yeah, you can be seated. After the service, they will, uh, we invite you to grab after you've greeted uh, Jenny and others. And you know, it's like there's so much going on, which is good and hard to do it all. But we invite you to grab your coffee and cake and bring it into the sanctuary if you desire. We, it's tile floors, we can clean it up. <laughs> um, so bring that back in and listen to and ask questions, uh, get updated on campus ministry. Uh, not only here at UNM, but campus ministry is, you know, uh, even worldwide there are campus ministries. So, but anyway, so come and find out more about that. Um, next Saturday is Father Ann Trapino's ordination at 2 p.m. at the uh, at St. John's Episcopal Cathedral, and then Sunday at one o'clock right here. She's going to celebrate her first Mass. So you are invited to both. I think there's even another meet and greet prior to that. You can go to her website. But to me, those are the two really important uh, events happening. Um, and we look forward. Uh, Susan, where are you, Susan, upstairs, has donated a lot of time uh, in, in helping her with music. And the choir will be there for the first Mass uh, uh, when we celebrate that. So come and uh, celebrate a continued Reformation movement, right? To say to Rome that women can be priests. That's kind of what this movement is about. So I hope you can support her. Um, I want a quick note on the bulletins. Last week, you know, you know I came back. I heard, I heard people saying, well, there's nothing small about, it's the same. The small bulletin is the same as the large one, except for the hymns. Well, this week, that's not true. We made the font smaller in the smaller bulletin, and we removed all music, but there are page numbers for you to look up in the bulletin. So let us know how that goes. Otherwise, if you don't want to mess with the bulletin, the large print is your option. If you want a different bulletin, now's your chance to jet out and grab a different bulletin or raise your hand. Oh, they're out. So we'll have to, <laughs> never mind. We'll have to keep our eye on numbers and how that goes. So again, it's, it's all good. We're learning and we're stepping into new things. Um, all right, I think the last announcement is, again, after last week's, uh, my first week back, um, I made mention that we are at a crossroad. Um, and that we've been here for some time as a congregation. There's some energy welling up around that to do what I'm labeling a think tank. So you are invited. I haven't scheduled it yet, but we, I'm in conversation with the Synod office. We have great resources and people that are uh, amazing in helping Congregations just like us, we're not the only ones who are trying to figure out who we are moving into this uh, new age. So uh, stay tuned for more information on a think tank. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed? All right. We rise and sing together, word of God, come down on earth.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Indeed, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord, have mercy on our world.
prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, increase us in your gift of faith that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or the Lord will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said, hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnants of Joseph. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man came up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions. Just then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard will it be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals, it is impossible, 
but for God, not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Well, did you hear about all those massive investigations oh, a week or so ago dubbed the Pandora Papers? Few of you may have read or heard about them. Some 12 million leaked records showing how the world's uber wealthy hide their money, namely in offshore accounts. Why? My interpretation, to hoard what they have, to avoid paying taxes. As if having billions of dollars isn't enough, it's as if they don't want to contribute to the good of the whole. This elaborate offshore infrastructure helps individuals set up shell companies and trusts, albeit legal, the whole thing just sticks in my craw. You? Yeah. I know I'm not alone in believing that taxes are good for the communal whole. Sure, there's some fraud and misuse but I guarantee there's not one single person in this country who can say that they are self-made, right? Because there's not one single person who can say they don't use the publicly built infrastructure for water and sewer and power and roads and, 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 and all the things that help us be community. And lest we think offshore accounting is only happening in foreign countries, South Dakota, Delaware, and Nevada are included in the list of places to hide one's wealth. I wonder, is this the kind of wealth that the man had in our gospel? Or did he have the kind of wealth that you and I have? Roof over our heads, groceries in the fridge, hopefully, and hopefully a few dollars in our pocket. While most of us will never experience the kind of wealth as those who are seeking offshore accounts, we are truly richer than 80% of the world's population, especially three billion of our neighbors who live or attempt to live on less than $2.50 a day. But is this text really talking about money? Kind of like last week's text. Was it really talking about divorce? You've heard it. You've probably even said it. Money is the root of all evil, right? It's a common phrase. But what the verse says from 1 Timothy is actually the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not inherently good or bad, but loving it just make, make us go down a path not good for the whole might make us miserly or covetous. And the rich man in our story, I don't think was either. He wasn't a bad person by anyone's standards. While he probably exaggerated when he claimed to have kept all of the commandments right from his youth, he seemed genuine in seeking the kingdom. Somehow he knew that keeping the commandments wasn't enough. 
and he was deeply attached to his wealth. Some studies suggest in the theological world that Jesus' teaching about the camel and the needle's eye might be referring to a gate leading into the city of Jerusalem called the needle's eye. The gate was so narrow that in order to enter it, camels carrying large loads of goods would have to be unloaded. So one way of looking at this text is that Jesus is inviting us to unload ourselves. Get rid of whatever might be keeping us from relying on God. That might be wealth. That might be the worries of this world. Maybe even the worries about getting into heaven. Whatever it is that is distracting you from loving God and loving neighbor. Another way to look at this text is that Jesus wasn't talking about wealth at all. That he was talking about our inability to earn salvation and our inability to depend on God's mercy alone. Right? The man walked away tightly gripping his wealth. And Jesus said, for humans, it's impossible. Or maybe this text is a both and all kind of text. Because the thing is, I think God really does care about how we use our wealth. There are plenty of scriptural accounts that speak to selling what we have in order to care for the poor, the widow, the orphan. But what we do with our wealth has nothing to do with salvation. We've simply been given the gift. David Lose, one of my favorite contemporary theologians, says it like this. Good Lord, there's not much any of us can do to inherit anything. Except wait for the one who owns what we want to die. Right? That's an inheritance. And when it comes to eternal life, that happened on the cross. There is nothing for us to do, or not do for that matter, to secure our place with God. Jesus has already done that, right? For us, it's impossible to do it. But thanks be to God. And so this poor, rich guy, somewhere deep down, knows that something's missing. However faithful, however pious, he's unable to grasp something, right? I think he's got his hands too full of other stuff. There's nothing left to grab hold And so he seeks Jesus. And I think Jesus sees all that this poor guy is grabbing a hold of, his knowledge, his piety, his wealth, and how it has distorted how this man sees himself, how this man sees God, how this man sees neighbor. And Jesus says, let it go then come and follow me. If this is true, then Jesus might be saying the same thing to you. Looking at you with all the love in the world. And knowing that that thing you are tightly gripping is asking you, to loosen your grip, maybe even let it go. Again, this is not about your salvation. That's a done deal, right? Saved by grace through faith for Christ's sake. Know that you are blessed to be a blessing. 
You are freed to love each other, to care for God's people and the world around us, not out of any hope of earning anything, but out of a joyful basking in God's favor. It's our response. But of course, it's not easy giving up all that you have, right? Deep down, all of us, like the rich man, may have other plans for our wealth. And even after all the church going, right, we still don't feel like giving it all up. Which is precisely why Jesus names the idols we've created and asks us over and over again for the sake of our neighbor to give them up. So what is the idol or idols that Jesus is naming for you? That's your task should you choose to accept it throughout the week and days and months ahead. What are the idols in your life? What are the idols in our life, communally? Whatever it is, it might be the first step in getting past our indecision as a community about which way to go on that crossroad that I talked about last week. Remember, we can certainly keep going down the same path doing the same thing that we've been doing. But if we expect a different result, we've got to do something different. God promises all things are possible, and God is leading the way. So truly, we have nothing to lose, right? Amen. Take my life, take our lives, Lord, that we may be. Prayers of intercession. Take your mask off. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. 
Uniting God, you call forth different gifts in those who follow you. Encourage us to welcome the diverse benefits and blessings of the whole church in teaching, preaching, prophecy, healing, and more. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you bring forth crops from the soil and bounty from the trees. Increase the produce of the land and bless all who toil in fields and orchards. Provide for good working conditions and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Empowering God, you offer compassion for those who are overlooked or forgotten. Open the hearts of local, national, and world leaders to show such compassion and love for their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sheltering God in Jesus, you traveled among us without a place to lay your head. Provide safe places to sleep and rest for those who have no place to live. Sustain ministries that offer food, clothing, and peace of mind. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Renewing God, you bring life out of death. Help us part with those things that are no longer beneficial to us and open our hearts to see where new life is budding in this congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died. Make us confident in your promise of salvation and support us in your own journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The offering prayer. The peace of the Lord be with you. We invite you to uh, make your way, should you desire to give a gift to the church, the basket. There's a basket where you entered. Um, I, I keep forgetting to check. There may be a basket at the back part over here just to help spread out. So I invite you to do that as the choir makes their way forward. May we bask in God's love and contemplate how God is calling us to be a part. You may be seated. The offering prayer, God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. 
Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we live into the kingdom, we offer the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Before I give the invitation, I'll invite you to prepare your communion kits. I am still perfecting it because I, I got it on me again. <laughs> so I guess I get to not only take in the blood of Jesus, I get to wear it today. The table is ready. Brings new meaning for table, right? It's not just a tiny little place we gather around, but a place that we gather together. The table is ready. All who hunger and thirst come. All gathered here and wherever you are worshiping from home. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Lamb of God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. We pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into the feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good people of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life into a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. We go in song through the glory of God alone.
wise one. Yes. I need your opinion. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. I know you're an expert in all these matters. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Does he make any lamp oil? Yes, they do. Okay. Yes, they do. Robin's wow. always done that. Yeah. I have to do this. Just to let you know. On, on. And I, I just, it's just typical of the way they design the software, which is to say, they didn't. Now, I'm expecting, uh, as far as the standard,
Just yeah, I, if I'm a tiny, a few minutes late, I don't think I, I think I can get that time, so I Maybe not, but it is harder for some. Is it being filmed? Is that no? Oh, okay. I don't think so. And we're off, right? Tech, tech. Yep. All right. All right. I <laughs> it's definitely loud enough. Yeah, I'm gonna let you just go up and start, and I'll see if I can. Okay, cool. Try to pull a few more bottles. So good morning, I'm Rhonda Newby Torres. Um, and as you know, I'm from Luther House. And I have a couple of our community members with me. This is Rowan and Carla. And James is here somewhere. And you all know Radu and Rindra. Do you want me to take my mask off? Um, Radu and Rinder are at uh, Balloon Fiesta this morning. So um, mostly I'm here to answer questions about Luther House. Um, I'll give you a little bit of an update about myself and about the community, and then I'll just open it up for questions. Um, so in our last newsletter, I introduced myself, um, Rhonda Newby Torres. I am in the ordination process for the United Church of Christ. And I just graduated from St. Norbert College, which is an ecumenical um, college down at the Norbertine Monastery. Um, if you can't tell, I do lean into ecumenical work. And so I am UCC serving at Lutheran, graduating from Catholic College. So I think that that is a good, a good start. Um, and I met the board over the summer, and we talked about ecumenical approaches to ministry and campus ministry, and we're all really excited about reaching out to, reaching out across divides um, and working with the other ministries and um, organizations on campus to try to build um, something across lines. Uh, I personally um, was working as the Director of Children, Youth, and Families at First Congregational United Church of Christ with Sue Joyner for the last three years. Yay, Sue! Everybody seems to know Sue. I think she's the most uh, known clergy I've ever met. <laughs> Before that, I spent 16 years working at East Central Ministries as a community developer. And so my approach is very much community development. Um, I did not come into Luther House with a, an agenda per se. My agenda is to listen, to get to know folks, and for us to build a, an organization and a community together. So in that vein, we have a few activities, um, several activities happening each week. Um, our biggest event is Wednesday evenings. We have a dinner. We do a shared meal together that we call the open table. And so everybody's invited. We have free food, and it's mostly a time to commune and fellowship together. It's followed by a liturgy of some sort. We either do a Bible study or spiritual practice. And again, everybody in the community is invited to lead that liturgy. Um, I will lead it and we'll follow the lectionary if nobody else is wanting to do a special event or if we have a special guest, which we love to do. Um, and we learn together. We follow the lectionary the Sunday after uh, it happened so that everybody that went to church, we can all share. What are the things that we learned on Sunday? And we learn from each other. And then on Thursdays, we do centering prayer at the duck pond um, at lunch. And then at 3 o'clock, we volunteer at the Lobo Food Pantry. And then on Fridays, we do chalk and talk about justice in the plaza. 
that has turned out to be a really fun event, um, also lots of hard work, but it's an amazing way to do public art expressions of justice and to engage people. So we've been doing interactive talking. So like this week we did love over theology, love over politics, love over denominations, and then we did love over and just made blanks. And then we walked around asking people, what are things the church could be doing better? What do you think we could do? How can we love the world better? And people just got on their hands and knees and chalked. And it was really beautiful. And it's been an exciting experience. So that's why we have going on right now. Um, we are, like we were, um, Christy was talking about, moving and like changing, it's an organism which we're developing together. So maybe next semester it doesn't look that way, but we're gonna build it together. So I'd love to answer any questions that you have about Luther House or me or our community. Yes, Bob. Yes, yeah, so Bob's asking if we have contacts with other campus ministries and organizations on campus. I have met with the Wesley House. Um, we are working on some projects together. I have not um, connected with the Newman Center yet, but I have plans to do that. We've been working with the um, uh, Kiva Club, um, several justice clubs on campus. Um, and yes, so we are reaching out. Um, most of the, a lot of the campus ministries are understaffed um, and they have a hard time collaborating. So we're gonna keep leaning into that and, and building those relationships. But just like anything else, right, it takes forever to build relationships. Yes, Terry. Oh, hi, Anne. Oh, okay. So Terry's asking about a, a communal mural project that um, you donated towards. Um, and so I will look into that because public art is like my favorite. I think murals and, and public art is a great way um, to incorporate people and invite people in. So I, I have heard nothing about that, but I will look into it because it sounds extremely exciting. I have a question for you all. There is a mural on the front of Luther House that is a stripes that are in, do we know what, it, does anybody know what they mean? I have asked so many people, do you know, Carla? No, I asked Pastor Ann on Facebook. I did, I asked Pastor Ann, but I think she just forgot to get back to me because we all know she knows the answer. <laughs> You know, it kind of looks like a giant P, and then it gets loopy. It's beautiful, but I'd like to know. Maybe, no? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I should, it'll, we'll make it a competition. You, then you get like a free mug. <laughs> You did just remind me of um, a couple of the things that I was gonna ask folks to do. The, the most important thing that we would really like folks to do is to follow us on Facebook or Instagram. I am posting tons of pictures and what we're up to almost every time we do an event on Facebook and Instagram. Otherwise, you have to wait and three months to hear on our newsletter, and it's not nearly as exciting or chopped full of what we're doing. So I would love for you to follow us 
on Facebook is where I post a lot. Instagram is not as easy to post on, but I do post there. We started a meal train for our Wednesday night dinners. So we do have, our kitchen is less than stocked, but we can make it happen and we can cook for ourselves and our residents cook for themselves amazingly. I'm so impressed. Um, but to cook for 12 to 16 people is a heck of a project to take on every Wednesday. And we would love to have you join us um, and if you could provide a meal. We've been meeting in the front yard of Luther House and it has been lovely. We have a fire pit. Last week we had s'mores. We had amazing theological conversations around our fire pit. So we have a, a paper sign up for a meal train and we are on mealtrain.com or org. It's on the board out there. Um, and of course, um, we have, we love monetary donations. We have set up for um, online or uh, in-person donations. What else did we have for t-shirts and mugs? You get a, I think a couple of you have t-shirts, but still trying to bribe you with them. Luther rocks and stickers, yeah. But really, we would love for you to follow us on Facebook so you can see what's happening. So we had about 10 residents, which we were not supposed, we have, we have about six is how we are supposed to have. Um, two just got married and moved out. And um, the UNM uh, vaccine mandate, uh, a couple of them had to, had to move back home. Um, so right now, currently we have three, um, and then we, I'm, we have a waiting list of folks to get back in. So I think the vaccine mandates were hard on some folks, um, getting, it, getting it done in time, so they got disenrolled. Yes. I'm an old fogey. We don't have forks or spoons. Oh, I'm sure we do. We have lots of lids. <laughs> yes. We could use a kitchen shower. We could. Yeah, that's really what we're trying to push for the... Yes. founded the Rocky Mountain Youth Camp.
Thank you so much for inviting us here to share, to worship with you. We are doing a worship with series on Sundays. So we are visiting all of the Lutheran churches, all of the Knob Hill churches, um, so that we can get connected and, and meet everybody. So um, you'll see us around. We're going to be at St. Tim's next weekend. kitchen shower I love it and we'll look for your lid because you know of course just like all good kitchens we have an abundance of lids Thanks for everyone who was here to, to participate in this. I'll go in peace. Have a good uh, week. Thank you again. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. What a great opportunity. It's at 6 o'clock right now. Yes. So join us any Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Yay! Good. And because we're doing our fire pits right now, it's really lovely. Yeah, and s'mores. We, we bribe people with s'mores. <laughs> <laughs>